Hi guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Mac with 9 before in the family. And today I have a really great one for you. We're at the Malvern Autumn Show. This is new. It's my first autumn show. It is an agricultural show. But we're here at the end of the season. This should be a wonderful day. And I'm on the hunt for some giant pumpkins and really large produce because I heard it's all here. So come along. Let's go enjoy this day. Trust me, you're going to like it. So they have a nice little car show here. We just came in through the north entrance. We're at the three counties fairgrounds. And I think I've been here before, but I've definitely never been to this show before. I'm really excited about it. The weather is absolutely beautiful, completely sunny, about 60 degrees, just perfect weather. Here's something I don't normally see, but here's a Kent County police car. An older model, it's really cool. Oh, yeah. This is old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Puts me in mind of the TV show. <laughs> Really nice old heritage vehicles here, and I'm really excited to go into the Harvest Pavilion. This is the Worcestershire Beekeepers Association is in here as well. Let's go check this out. Oh, this is really wonderful. It looks like this is where a lot of the flowers are located. And as I walk through the door, I'm overwhelmed by the smell of fragrant, fragrant flowers. Really beautiful. Look at what we have here on this first table, and it's a lot of cacti. And I love cactus. I love them a lot, but I have a house full of kids, and I don't feel like picking these thorns out of tiny little fingers. Because that's what I did when I was a kid. I couldn't keep my hands off of them. You just want to touch those thorns. And boy, did they hurt you so much later on. Second place cactus. Look at this one. It's really nice. Nice colors there. And then here is the first place in the succulent cactus selection here. It's really nice. Here's the first place. Third place, I mean. So just a really nice selection of beautiful cactus and succulents. This is unique. There's also a Royal Horticulture Society show going on here. And this may be a part of that because these are all blooms from a fuchsia plant, different varieties. But this is really unique. I've never seen flowers displayed on these boards like this before. And I will admit that I have not spent much time around the Royal Horticulture Society, but if this is what they do, I like it. We have the Fuchsia, the British Fuchsia Society is on display here. So there will be a lot of Fuchsia, really a lot of Fuchsia here because I see it all on this table and right across the way, there are quite a bit more. So the British Fuchsia Society is showing here today, but my goodness, look at these beautiful fuchsia. And this is basically a fuchsia Christmas tree. Now they pull this look off because there are a lot of pots in here on a frame and they're all one variety, but it just looks so good the way they stack this up. And I mean, this is, wow, this is really tall. 30 feet maybe, really tall. Maybe 20 feet, but still beautiful. Second prize for these large pom-pom dahlias, the fourth prize, and then the first prize. And I'm such a fan of dahlia. I didn't used to like them, but they have really grown on me. The flowers are just undeniable with their beauty. I'm not a huge fan of the way the plants grow. They're kind of wild looking, but wow, look at these blooms. They almost don't look real. This is why I wanted to come to the Autumn Show, guys, to see what it can be on display here in the fall. I've seen what's on display in the middle of the summer 
and I love it, but I also love this fall display as well. A magnificent display of dahlia by the National Dahlia Society. Dahlias are beautiful flowers and blooms, and they have come in different types as well. There's the pom pom, there's these, and the small ones and large. They come in almost every color bicolor, tricolor, really spectacular plants. Wow, look at that. Just a magnificent display. And here are some dahlia. You know, I don't see these very often. They look on the size and scale with the very large sunflowers. But these are cactus dahlia. And these plants are incredibly large. Because just look at the size of that bloom. This is my hand. And the bloom is much larger than my hand. Just to give you perspective, these blooms are magnificently large and really unique. This show just keeps going and going and going. And I'm not going to show you every single bloom and every single flower that's in here, but I do really want you to appreciate the beauty that's in here and the care that each gardener had to put and to grow on these plants and to deliver such beautiful, wonderfully shaped blooms. Look at these petals. Everything perfectly in place. They picked the very best. Time the blooming to make sure that it would be ready for this show. A lot of effort went into getting these blooms into these vases here today. This show is not just about beautiful flowers, it's also about produce. And look at the size of some of these leeks. Here's the first prize leek, and it is massive. Here again, my hand in comparison to the size of the leek. Moving on down, here's the first prize cabbage. Wow, I wish I had weights on this one, but this is a truly magnificent cabbage. These are larger than any ball. Basketballs don't come this large, and they're just massively large. I wish I had weights on them, but they're really beautiful cabbage. First prize, best in show. Look at this parsnip. It literally goes from one side of the table to the other. And right next to it, first prize, carrots. Oh my goodness. This is magnificent. And for anyone who questions the true size of this produce, I put a British pound and American quarter down on the table just to give you a little bit of scope so you can understand exactly how large these parsnips are. And it's no different for the carrots, which are also right here beside them. I have never seen produce this large. This is such a magnificent display of high quality massive produce. Look at this leeks, look at the size of the celery, and look at those onions. Massive. Onions the size of softballs. You know, and it's really cool, they actually have for sale here seeds. So you can prepare for next year. They also have some wonderful bulbs as well. I would definitely be checking these out. There's some for sale on this side, and there's some more for sale over here. I just think this is a great, great addition. I am thoroughly in love with this autumn show. And here are some massively long and large beets. First prize beets, second prize beets, third prize beets. And again, more of these magnificent carrots. This produce is next level. I'm so glad I came to the show today. And then here, wow, look at this celery. I'm so glad. And I haven't even made it to the giant pumpkins yet uh, or the giant gourds, but I'm thoroughly impressed by what I'm seeing here with this giant celery, leeks, carrots, parsnips. Just magnificent. Every time I think I've seen all the giant produce, I come to another table and it just keeps going. Look at this first prize celery. Again, I placed the British pound and the American quarter on the table just to kind of give you some perspective and scale to sizing on this produce. And the produce just keeps going. Hey guys, we're going to get out of, the, out of this pavilion eventually. But when things are good, they're really good. And this is really good. 
definitely going to pick up some seeds. And I recognize some of these things can't be grown until next year, but I can definitely start some of these off here in the winter time. I think that'd be a good way to spend some of those long, well, short winter days, but it's going to be long nights, but those long, cold winter afternoons, when the weather's horrible, I could get inside and plant me some wonderful flowers in preparation for spring. So I picked up some seeds here. We're going to continue to look around and then we're going to go on the hunt for the large pumpkins because I think they're here as well and see what else is here at this autumn show. The Harvest Pavilion showed many different flowers and plants available during the fall just walked out of the Harvest Pavilion. That was the first pavilion that we've gone into since we first came into the show here. Wow, that's all I can say. The giant produce, wow. The flowers, the fuchsias, the dahlias, absolutely beautiful. But now we're back outside. Let's walk around the rest of the show here and see what we have. Next, I think we're gonna look at some really old lawnmowers. We move along to the motorized equipment, but these are still pretty small. Look at this nice little tractor. It's sick. I like that. One seater, get the job done. Oh my goodness, when I was a kid, I actually used to use a tiller like this. And tillers are such, you know, they do, they pull along, they do a lot of work for you, but they're pretty hard to manhandle up and down the roads. And they're constantly getting hung up on roots. But yeah, I used to work with a tiller like this when I was a kid. So far at the show. I like the flowers, different varieties, and also the fruit. The um, large sizes, different sizes of, of, of vegetables. That was real nice. Yeah, very nice. Guiding skills in our traditional arts. Let's see what's going on in here. I presume this is where you're going to have some of your nice, nice craftsmen, artisans. And that is exactly what you get. Look at this. This guy's sculpting a doll dead in my face. Beautiful. Now this is a lost art. This is such a unique skill. <laughs> to be able to do this for a day job, I'll tell you, I'd switch jobs with me today if I could. <laughs> Beautiful work. Just like a dog out of a block of stone. This truly is a forgotten skill. Let's see what else we have here. Here's some wonderful knittings. You know, I needle felt, but I don't knit. But here's some great knittings and the staves. I love the staves. And I think here we have artists doing some woodwork. Oh wow, this is really nice. Actual woodwork. I presume he's working on a lathe. I think that's what they're called. Okay. And wow, if I could get one of these nice gourds and hang this on my Christmas tree, I think that would be awesome. Oh, I like the 
buy one, but I don't want to bother them. I might come back by. In my last work. These are really pretty. Look at this beautiful bee here set aside of this glass mosaic. You know, I've seen these setups before, but I've never seen them with the artist that's actually crafting at the show. So that's really wonderful to see the artists here and to see them crafting at the show. Wow. And I think I see some needle felt to work here. Again, I do needle felt, so I'm always drawn to it whenever I see it. I've never seen a large needle felted piece like this before. That is so beautiful. Here's some of the smaller needle felted pieces. You know, maybe it's the fact that it's been a couple months since I've been to a county show. But here at this agriculture show, here at this autumn show, guys, I'm really having a great time out here today. It's just set up so well, everything's laid out, and then the artists that are on display creating their craft. That is really beautiful. The Vintage Tractor and Engine Club. It's a nice club. I don't know if I'm mechanically inclined enough to join it, but I hear all these nice engines just puttering along and there are some old historical tractors right there. Nice Massey Ferguson International and a John Deere down on the end. into Danny's 20 minute time allowance. We've got the outline of an owl there. Moving to those smaller chainsaws. These sheds are really beautiful. There's so much to see out here and we're on the hunt for some food but there's a lot to see and we're going to circle around and see as much as we can. This, it says greenhouse people, and they have some truly phenomenal little greenhouses here. This is where, if I had the money and space and time, I'd definitely invest in me a nice little greenhouse. I have a nice conservatory, but still, nothing beats a greenhouse. This one right here, this is all I need. This would be perfectly sized. Just perfectly sized. I can have my pots back on this side, working with the dirt here, and then just growing out on this side. Beautiful little greenhouse. Has so many plants for sale and on display out here. It's really different than your county shows. So, whereas your county shows, you'd have all your animals. This is really plant and produce heavy. I've already bought some seeds. I may go home with a couple plants as well. So here's the food and drink festival. Let's see what we have here. There's a lot to drink, but let's see what there's to eat. It's absolutely beautiful. You got these hills, which may just be mountains. I don't know if they're quite tall enough, but either way, you're, you're sitting here like in a valley with these mountains up on one side of you. It's just really beautiful. Eats, uh, barbecue steam train. The Beefy Boys, Shake Your Rump Milkshakes, I like that. Loaded Fries, I think we'll be able to find something here. But we're going to let Blair make the decision about what we eat today. Okay. So, that is, uh... so we're getting some Beefy Boys burgers, and they have a nice little wing sauce here. And what else did I get? They also have little burger seasoning, so hopefully the fries will be up to the flavor, but if it is, I have something to take home with me. <laughs> the county shows! have been um they have been exciting uh 
not only do you go to the county shows and you see different um, exhibits and stuff, but you also meet meet people and you get a chance to talk to some of the um, natives. Okay. The natives. Yeah. <laughs> the natives. I like that. Back here. This is not normal for a agricultural show, but three nice burgers here and it goes a nice bag to carry it and we're going back to a pavilion to sit on and eat really want to enjoy this meal um, cider maker since 1880 hot mold cider that sounds nice maybe a little warm for me i want something that's going to be really appley let's see what they have to uh fit the bill there i'm going to ask them which one that Perry looks nice, but what are your thoughts? Perry sounds good. Paint of the Mortimer's Archer. It's nice, still fruity, retains that apple flavor to it. Not too strong of a cider. This should be nice with these burgers. What's that cider? Just finished a great meal, guys. Those burgers were on point. You know, we were asked by a couple of other customers in line. It's American. Can you really tell me if this is a real, legit American-style burger? And at that time, I never tried it before, so I couldn't say. But now that I have tried, I can 100% say, yes, American-style burger. All the flavors are right. Everything tastes good. And the only, only thing I have to say about it is that they use two types of cheese. They use an American cheese and a Swiss cheese on the burger that I got, which is a, they're all American boy or something like that. But listen, in America, we don't mix cheeses on our burgers. If it's an American cheese, that's it. If it's Swiss, it's Swiss. If it's cheddar, it's cheddar. I've never had it with two mixes of two different cheeses. It wasn't bad, but that's the only thing that I say that wasn't 100% authentically American. But maybe we as Americans should incorporate that into our burgers because it was very, very it's tasty. Trash. So we just finished lunch and now we're off to see my favorite thing that I wanted to see here all day, which is the giant vegetable competition. This is where you're going to have those super ultra large vegetables, even larger than the ones I showed you earlier. Let's go check these out. Through the door, this is the National Giant Vegetable Competition. And let's start out right here, dead ahead of me. Look at these massive bell peppers. And when possible, I want to put down a bit of reference for you. Here's a British pound and an American quarter. Just to kind of give you a bit of scale so you can understand exactly how large these vegetables really, really are. But these are all massively giant bell peppers. And the giant vegetables just keep going. Here's a third place and a second place and a first prize. Although the first prize is not longer, it is girthier than a lot of the others here. And again, there's that quarter and that pound to show you a bit of scale. And then here's first prize, 2023. Look at this. These are cucumbers. I have never seen cucumbers this long ever. Absolutely massive cucumbers. And here are the giant vegetables. Continuing to look at the size of these onions. They're as large as a softball, and in some cases, almost as large as a basketball. Absolutely, magnificently large. Again, quarter, pound, to give you a bit of understanding of the scope, the size of these vegetables. And look at these giant onions. These are yellow onions, guys. These are magnificently large. 
And here's first prize. Wow. And here are some very large sunflower heads. I've seen large sunflowers before. I'm not as shocked by them as I am by some of these other produce, such as again, these onions are just massive. And here is some truly magnificent rhubarb. And some pretty hefty potatoes. So this is the table with the giant vegetables. Let's move on to some giant tomatoes. And here are some what almost appear to be Frankenstein tomatoes. These things are massive. Wow. And again, to help keep that perspective, here's fourth prize. That's a British pound and a quarter again, just to kind of keep the perspective on the exact size of how large these tomatoes are. And on the end here are what we call in the U.S. eggplants. These are some pretty beefy sized eggplants as well. And you can see who stands out ahead above all the others, which is this first prize winner here. Yeah. Massive eggplant. And now we're moving on to the longest vegetables. And these are going to be predominantly your carrots and your parsnips. But what is this? This is a Guinness World Record. The largest runner bean leaf in the Guinness World Record. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. This is a Guinness World Record. Largest runner bean leaf. And we're talking about the longest vegetables. And you can see this is a root coming off. And this is all of root. There's another root. And there's another root starting. Wow, look at these roots coming off of these beets. First prize renter, this beet has to be at least 20 feet long, if not longer than that. It runs from here, literally, to the end of the state. And so you have all these carrots and parsnips, radishes, and just look at how long these vegetables are. Now, to me, this looks like a cantaloupe, but I've never seen a cantaloupe look like this before. If it is a cantaloupe, it is. It's a cantaloupe melon. I've never seen one this good. Are these massively long beans, runner beans? Look at these. And then beside those beans, we have what appear to be some really long cayenne peppers. I've never seen a long version of a chili pepper like this, but these are special chili peppers. Anyways, guys, now let's move to the other end where we're going to see the really big produce. So we're going to start here and work our way around. This is called Swede. I'm not familiar with it, but it produces a truly magnificent bowl underground. Look at this. First prize winner here. Look at the size of this, guys. And as usual, I'm going to give you this quarter and pound to, get, to help with your perspective. But right past the Swedes, we move into the massive of beets. Look at the size of these beets. I've never seen beets this large before. I'm just imagining the effort it took to grow these. Here's third prize for beets. And here is the first prize for 
pigs. Absolutely massive. And then on this other side here, I think these are going to be radishes. Oh my goodness. Look at these giant radishes. And here's first prize. And then the mother of all leeks. The leeks that I saw earlier, I thought they were big. But look at these leeks. First prize. Perspective. Absolutely massive. Here's the Guinness World Record for the heaviest runner bean at 196 grams. And there's another heavy bean beside it at 192 grams. Truly massive. This is four, no, five Guinness World Records that I've seen at this show. Next we have kohlrabi. And wow, kohlrabi gets big. But these kohlrabi are massive. Now look at the first prize. I wish I had a weight on this, but this is the largest kohlrabi I could have ever imagined. Next to the kohlrabi, we have some heavyweight carrots. These are not beautiful, but they are big. And here's the first prize winner for the largest carrots. This is going to be all based on weight, not based on beauty, guys. But these parsnips also really, really massive. We're going to just keep working our way around this table with this absolutely giant, giant produce. And I do believe this is going to be celery. Look at the bunch here. This is one plant. And these bunches are absolutely massive. Look at some truly heavyweight watermelons. And what I wish I could give you, I don't have it listed, but I wish the heavyweights were actually listed, but I don't see the weights on them. But I can tell you, they're truly massive. massive watermelons okay now we're moving on to the true heavyweights these are some of the largest of the large guys well, here are some heavyweight marrows we're getting to the forklift size guys there's those for scale just so you can understand these are absolutely massive marrows they look like giant squash to me it's what we call it in the states i believe but wow, magnificently large. Let's take a walk around and look at all of these giant marrows. I've seen giant cabbage before. I've never seen giant cabbage like this. That one says it's, I believe it says it's 10 kilograms. Look at the third prize winner here. And here's the first prize winner cabbage. I think that says it's 24 kilograms. Look at this cabbage. You know, you need a team just to help pick these up. Okay, last but not least, what everyone is here waiting on, let's go check out the giant 
perfect. There's no reason to put a quarter down for these. I'll use a little kids to let you see exactly how large these pumpkins really are. These are squash on this side. Here's the first prize squash. Again, that's a grown lady standing behind it to give you a size perspective. 213 kilograms. That is a massive squash. Wow, and tucked away in the corner is another Guinness World Record, the world's tallest tummy pillow claim. 11 feet, 6 inches. So here are the large pumpkins, 256 kilograms. 244 kilograms truly magnificent this is what i always wanted to see these massively large pumpkins wow 590 kilograms and this is second prize. And then the first prize is 636 kilograms. Truly a magnificent. But there are some others on around on the other side. So let's take a look around the other side to see see a couple of the other very large pumpkins here. <laughs> Massively large pumpkins. Blair, take a seat next to these pumpkins. Let me just get a perspective of how large these pumpkins really are. <laughs> asking the guy from Canada, which I think hosted this whole event, what do you need to grow these giant pumpkins? Of course, you need the right seeds. They told me about those, and they told me about a website, giantpumpkins.com. If I want to grow giant pumpkins, they didn't tell me everything I know. I might give it a shot next year. Let's grow some giant pumpkins. Garden theater. Let's see what this is all about. I can tell you one thing, plants, plants, and more plants. And I'm so glad that I'm someone who really likes plants. Indigo blueberry is a very unique tomato. Look at that, I've never seen that one before. But there are some beautiful plants here. Patio palm. Patio plum, look at that. Habanero. There are some truly magnificent flowers here. There's some truly magnificent peppers here. And then next to that are a wonderful selection of cactus and succulents. Well, cacti and succulents. Yeah. And here's a beautiful selection of bromelids as well. Bromelids are really great and beautiful plants. They bloom only once and then they shoot off a daughter plant off to the side, but they do kind of reproduce themselves so you could have bromelids for a long time if you treat them with the right proper care. And plants to our heart's content here. But there's some things I've never seen before, but look at these. Artillery. Those are nice. But I think Blair is looking at some really nice tulips. Let's see if we can find some beautiful tulips. Oh, it's a daffodil. Yes. That is unique, though. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Goodbye. 
Look at the size of these amirlises. Wow, I've never seen bulbs this big. These are old. It takes a really long time. Oh, well, many years to get a mirrorless bulb to this size. Beautiful plants, though. Let's take, we have to get at least one of these guys. Here is a beautiful bonsai. Wow. Now look at this tiny little Japanese maple forest. The coloration on that, fall colors, really beautiful. Let's keep moving. This is such a wonderful pavilion if you love plants. It's a great place to be. Here are roses, mostly hybrid teas, really beautiful. And all of this is for sale. So if you want to take one of these beautiful plants home with you, you can. Here's some magnificent ferns. That's a nice setup to bring that into the show here. Agapanthias, which is one of my favorite plants. I have a lot of these already at home. And once again, Blair is attracted to the hostas. Hostas really are a beautiful shape, man. Here are beautiful bowls. This is such a wonderful, wonderful show. Never been to an autumn show before. It has an entirely different vibe than our summer shows that we've gone to, the county shows. You know, there are no animals here, but I love a show that's just dedicated to flowers and foliage. I'm thoroughly impressed. Here is a magnificent selection of June. Actually, I thought they were geraniums, but they're not geraniums. So this is us working down one side. Uh, yeah. uh, here are some beautiful gladiolus. And here are some pelagoniums. Nice flowers. <laughs> Oh, and even asters. I love the way this is set up. Really flower specific. Dianthias, which is a great flower. Almost looks like grass until it blooms. And then here are camellia, which is a wonderful, wonderful plant from Japanese. Don't have a lot of smell on those blooms, but they're so beautiful. Some of them are quite geometric in their design. But these asters are really beautiful. And here, the beloved pitcher plants. Wow. So here's a Japanese anemone, which is an elfin swan. Anemones are really beautiful. You know, these little wooden houses, greenhouses, I'm telling you, they're really beautiful. I like this one a lot. Look at this glass, and you can just kind of, you can see yourself in there, just gardening to your heart's content. Got the nice boxes there. You can grow things, hot boxes, really nice. I've gone to a lot of great shows, but this one ranks right up there at the top. I love flowers. So this has been a wonderful experience. Something new for me, this autumn show is really, really top notch. If you get a chance to make it here next year, I highly suggest you do. This is one you don't want to miss if you're into gardening, plants, anything like that. This is where you want to be. So, hey, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. It's been a great day. See you next time.